What is up everybody? It's Cape Sipes and Custom Audio Reimagined. Welcome to another episode of In the Shop where we're not actually in the shop. Makes a lot of sense. This boat is the next project and it will not fit in the shop. It is a big ass pontoon boat. Normally I wouldn't mind, no big deal, um, but it's August and it's humid as hell and Indiana weather sucks. If there's one thing that I miss about Pit My Ride, it's the guys I worked with and the weather because this is basically hell on earth. So you'll see me with this towel because if you know me, I basically look like I'm melting all the time. I sweat from my head, I'm bald, nothing stops it, water just pours off, it's disgusting, it's embarrassing, but that's what's gonna happen. What's going on in this pontoon boat? This customer, because Labor Day is coming up, he wants his boat done, so we're gonna put in a JVC Marine radio, an Audio Pipe 6 channel amplifier, a 10 inch Polk Marine sub, and four Polk Marine six and a half throughout. Normally, it'd be like a day, day and a half job, knock it out, no problem. Um, underneath pontoons, normally you can access all the wiring and you'd have no issue doing everything. This boat, I forgot to look underneath the pontoon. Now, on pontoons, you have an option. You can get the bottom of your boat, I forget what they call it, but it's basically sealed. It's like plating. So if you're on a lake and you hit a tree stump or you hit anything, it's not going to damage the undercarriage of your pontoon. It's not going to mess up any wiring. What that is, is aluminum plating that runs from front to back and seals you from basically access to any wiring. Um, the only way to access it is to drill out all the rivets, then re-put the plates back up and re-rivet them. So that's what I'm going to tackle today is get the wiring ran so I can get that headache out of the way. It's going to take me most of the day just to get the lines ran because I have to do it all between the pontoon and the body. I got about a half inch space. So I'm going to have to use guide wires and fish lines and everything to try and get the wiring where I want it to go and bring it up to where all the equipment's going to be. So let's go ahead and get started on this wiring. I hope I don't melt. I have to do it all outside in the sun. I know, boohoo me, but dude, you have no idea. It's so hot here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is figure out this battery situation here. That is his primary battery, so of course his secondary, which I need to hook up to, is behind it. So we're going to have to remove all this crap out of the way, get to the secondary battery, and find out how the wires are dropping down through the body so I can try to fish the lines. Okay, so I made the cardinal mistake. I forgot to tell the customer to get all this crap out of the boat. So this is what you'll run into is just everything is gonna be in your way because people just pack their boats. They don't really organize them or storage them. So I'm gonna have so much crap in my way. So everything has to come out of this boat. If you ever have a boat to do, tell the customers to take all this crap out because now I'm stuck having to babysit it all, figure out where to put it in my shop. It's just a mess. So again, I screwed up. So as you can see on the underside of this boat, how it's solid, plated, no access that panel right there is one of the access panels I went ahead drilled it out and re-riveted it so I did pull the panel off like I said I wasn't going to pulled that panel right there got the wires ran and it's been re-riveted up so now the power and ground has been ran completely under and it's running up to there where the amplifier is going to be stashed away I also have the subwoofer lines ran over to the other side which is where the sub is gonna be right there. So all in all, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So what we're gonna do next, go ahead and drop in the four six and a halfs cause that shouldn't take much time at all. I fucking hate these boats. My big ass can't find a way to sit to film this. Oh, now my ass is all wet. Anyway, all right, we're in the boat. We're gonna go ahead and change out these speakers. I got the sun in my eyes, I'm squinting and I'm sweating, and now my ass is all wet because I sat down on the carpet because my big ass can't get in a good position to film this. So what we're putting in, the Polk DB Plus six and a halfs, Marine certified speakers. We're replacing what looks like this is the factory setup that was in the boat. It doesn't sound bad. It's got a clarion radio. It's not horrible. It's just meh. You know, it's nothing to write home about. So this guy wants to jam out on his boat waves with his family. So we're going to yank these out, put these six and a halfs in. That's going to definitely give him some uh, 
better output because the ones that are in here are looking pretty shoddy. We'll take a look at them when I pull them out. So now you get to watch me try to get my big fat ass in this position and figure it out. Oh. Try to keep this crack free. So when we get done with the uh, install, we're gonna need to put some rubber caps over the screws on the other side. Melting. So when people reach in there, they don't like drag their hand across the screw and cut themselves. So you can do it. There's a, multiple different ways to do it, but it's basically just need to insulate the screw so someone doesn't cut themselves. If you're in a pinch, you can use hot glue. Just glue around the threads in a point. Go ahead and pick up these screws because on a boat nobody ever really wears shoes so screws and no shoes like i made a rhyme let's move up to the front speakers all right so here we are front of the boat i've lost about 15 pounds of water so far in sweat today and get these speakers pulled put these pulks in we're calling it a day it's just miserable out here. For all you guys with shops big enough to hold a boat, I'm, I'm officially jealous. And if you have a shop that has AC in it and you can hold a boat, I mean, you're like gods. I mean, it's just, I can't imagine how wonderful that has to be. I'm still grinding like I'm 15 years old. Huh. I'm pretty stupid. You would think I'd learned by now. Alright, here we go. Yep, there's my ass in the air. What's up? It is day two on the pontoon. I'm wearing my hat because I am melting. It is so humid here. It stormed last night, so the boat's soaking wet. I'm gonna have a wet ass, wet knees all day, and the humidity is supposed to go just to 100%. So today is gonna be melting miserable day, and I'm hoping maybe my hat will stop some of the water from pouring into my eyes. But today what we're gonna try and get done is this JVC KD MR1 BTS Marine Radio, which looks pretty cool. It's got a screen. You can actually put a backup camera on it. I guess if you got a big enough boat or you just don't want to turn around. But uh, I'm going to put this in the dash. And then also I need to work on the amp rack, the way I'm going to mount the amplifier in there. Once I have that mounted in there and this mounted in there, I'm kind of good to go. I'll just go ahead and do the wiring and everything tomorrow, get it all buttoned up drop the sub enclosure in, and then we'll have this thing wrapped up and out of here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get out there and rip out the clarion dash, see what we're gonna have to do, cause we're gonna have to do some kind of modifications to the dash to get this radio in, because there's a DIN cut out now, and this does not require a DIN. It's like a three inch gauge hole mount, I'm pretty sure. So we need to make a plate, mount this, and then I also got dual USB charging ports that I'm gonna mount next to this since I know there's enough room because that dead hole's gonna be there. Let's hope it doesn't rain again today while I have the dash opened up. I really don't want water getting in there because that is back where the fuse panels and everything is. So let's get out there, get the clearing deck out, see what we gotta do, build a plate, get this mounted, and move on to the amplifier. All right, so I've been grinding on this boat all day, but I didn't really do any filming because as you can see, the sky there, it's getting ready to get ugly. And uh, I 
don't want to be working in that. So I've been busting my ass, so I really don't have time to set up the cameras. But there really wouldn't be anything to see other than my ass sticking up in the air. But here's what we got done today. That is the JVC unit. I added a dual USB charging right next to it. We had to put that PVC plate that I was making all mounted up in there, looking good. We'll clean it and wipe it all down when we're finished, but that is now hooked up, wired and done. Power's up, everything's good to go. So we didn't get to the amp mounting today, but tomorrow we should be able to button this boat up. Um, the amp uh, is going to go down in there. We've got all our power, ground, all the wiring's there and ready to go. And then the sub is going over here. So tomorrow we should be able to get the amp all taken care of first thing. Then we can jump over the sub and be done with this baby. So it is hot. I'm sweating. It's horrible. That is some nasty ass weather coming my way. So I'm hitting my tools, putting them away and getting out of here. Okay, here we are with day three of the boat job. It's actually taking longer than what I wanted because yesterday we got rained out. Big storms come roll through, killed half the day of work. So today we need to get the amplifier mounted, wired, get the sub in and get this thing buttoned up. Yesterday the radio's done, all works, everything powers up good, speakers are done. So just get the amp mounted, subs, doesn't sound like that big a deal, but climbing up and down into a pontoon boat sucks and it just kind of drags out, especially because you're doing it outside. But it's supposed to be a not humid, beautiful day, 74 degrees, and it's Friday. So I'm gonna get this thing knocked out, get it done, so let's get on it. Okay, well we're gonna put the amplifier in the boat. It's down behind the steering wheel, down behind the radio in that little cubby hole area. Um, we went ahead and pretty basic cardboard template of the area down the bottom where I can actually mount this amp where there's no lines or anything in the way. There is a three quarter inch wood that's fiberglassed into the bottom there. That's this area right here. So what I'm gonna do is cut off this shape out of some white PVC, and then we're gonna go ahead and do some three quarter inch standoffs on the bottom on each corner except this corner, so it'll sit level. Then we'll go ahead and mount this with some stainless screws into the boat so we have a sturdy mounting place. Then we can get the amp in there. I'm not gonna be able to film it because basically I'm gonna be buried inside this cubby hole so there's no nothing for you to see. So I'm gonna be in there for about half an hour, 45 minutes, wiring up the amplifier, then I'll be able to set it down, tag the amp down, turn on the radio, adjust the gains and crossovers, then put the cover on it, and then, well actually before I put the cover on, we're gonna go over and do the sub enclosure. But this shouldn't take too long, it's pretty simple and basic, just time consuming. So let me go ahead and get this cut out, get it matched up, and then we will move on to mounting it in the boat. So we've got the amp rack installed in the boat, mounted up just fine, so that's not a problem. One of the things that I do on all my amp installs, which I'll, some people have never seen these, but these are called wire ferrules. So if you've ever seen an amp install where people put the wires into the terminals, they tighten it down, and then you look at the amp and you can always see that little bit of wire hanging out from the terminals. It looks kind of janky, uh, definitely doesn't look professional. That's what these ferrules are for. They're just really soft and they'll crush. But what I do is, so this is my terminals. You see I've already got them installed here. So I loosen up this screw, take the ferrule, slide it there, loosen it up until the ferrule will go all the way in which is almost to where a screw comes out. Push the ferrule in, whoop, then turn this and tighten it just, to, just enough so it doesn't fall out. Now when I put the wire inside there and I tighten it down, that ferrule's gonna actually crush. It'll crush around the wire and it's not gonna allow it to slip, it's never gonna move, and you're not gonna have that ugly bare wire look because it's gonna be insulation going all the way into the ferrule. So I just wanted to show that real quick because I'm doing that right now. And then I also have these big ferrules for like four gauge, zero gauge. So I'll use these on the power and ground also. That's normally where you really see the problem is you always see a ground or power wire pulling out and you see the bare wire. It just looks like crap. So this makes it look a lot more professional, a lot more clean. So you can get these on Amazon. Um, it's like F-E-R-R-E-L. I'll just type in wire ferrule, you'll come across them and they come in all the different gauges. So I'm gonna get this thing, go ahead and get it prepped. I've already got the crossovers and gains pretty well set to my standard. So then I have a place to work from when it's in there. This amp actually looks pretty cool. It's an audio pipe 
Um, not something I normally use, but this is a pretty nifty six channel amplifier. It's got this plate that goes over the top of it. So once we're all done, the plate will mount over the top. It'll be clean, it's waterproof. Let's get this thing prepped and get it in there. Then we can wire it up and move on to the subs. All right, so the amp is mounted, wired up pretty well. Good to go, amp's all done. Now we're gonna move on to the sub. Now, my original idea, because of where he wanted the sub, he wants the sub placed in this like area. It used to be a cubby hole, it's kind of useless to him. So I was gonna fiberglass an enclosure, make it all cool. Um, then he told me that he may be getting rid of his boat after this year, that he may not even have the boat. He's gonna sell it. So if he's gonna sell the boat, it's kind of stupid to spend three to $500 on this big custom fiberglass enclosure that he's stuck with leaving in the boat. So I'm going to go with this Q-Bomb prefab sub box. 10 inch sub box, fully rhino lined. They're waterproof. I've used these before. You can put water on it all you want. Nothing's gonna happen to it. So this enclosure, we're gonna actually mount in that cubby area. Then we're gonna copy the front plate of the pocket that was there, do an opening, put a grill in. So it'll be a nice finished out, just white cover with a grill where the sub can play through. And then if he ever gets rid of the boat, he can take my panel off, take his sub enclosure out, take his sub with him and everything, slip that original little cubby back in, and he didn't lose anything. Then he can take this and put it in another boat, or he can put it in a car, he can do whatever he wants with it. But it saves him money, it saves me time, and at the end of the day, it's no point in doing a whole fiberglass enclosure if he's not gonna keep it. So really what it does is it saves him money, it saves me time, and if he's not gonna keep the boat, there's no reason to put something permanent in it permanently in there that he's not going to recoup the money back for when he sells the boat. No one's going to pay extra for a sub enclosure. So what we need to do here though is to get this at the right height so it's not so low in the cubby, I need to add an inch and three quarters to the bottom. So we're going to get some composite material I have, three quarter inch. We're going to get a couple pieces of the half inch PVC. We're going to basically sandwich them, make it a solid inch and three quarter plate. We're going to put that under here, mount it. Then once it's mounted, we're going to drill out some holes so we can put this in the boat. We'll screw this down to the inside of that enclosure. Then this thing will be mounted and good to go. Go ahead, put the sub in. Then we got to build the front plate. Then it's a matter of turning this thing on, letting you guys hear it and being done with this boat. Weather today is working out perfectly, so she should be buttoned up today. So let's get this thing taken care of. Okay, so we've got the box modified. Here it is, it is now mounted in the boat. We did an inch and three quarter plate on the bottom using composite material, so there's no problem with water. Sub is mounted. Now we need to get our front panel, which we have made. Front panel made out of white PVC. Did a grill insert, so now this should mount right up where I'm flush on this edge and up here. And there we go, we're centered with the sub. Okay, she is finally done. Six and a half there, six and a half there. Two more six and a halfs in the back. The 10 inch sub, got a heavy shadow going on there. 10 inch sub. JVC unit with the dual USB charging ports. Everything's pretty well done up. I mean, it's clean. It's one of my installs, always clean. Little things like uh, the backs of the screws. I don't know if you can see there. Notice on the back of the screw there, cap those off with some aquarium tubing so you don't catch your uh, life preservers on the edge of the screw or cut your hands. So that's just a little trick you can do. Doing boats, figure that out. Realized I forgot to show you where the ample's at. So behind that door, the glove box, you open that up and down in there is the audio pipe six channel. Came out pretty nice. All the wiring's nice and clean. See if I can get in there so you can see it. So that finishes up the install. Now it's time for me to take the weekend off. So the boat is done. I can finally go home, take the weekend off, 
The customer should be happy. It is very loud, it is very clean. It does not have a ton of bass, but that's what you usually get with boats. Since there's no cab to pressurize, it's kind of hard to get a lot of bass. You're just blowing the subs out into the air. But on the boat, you feel the bass, you feel it hitting. It's all that matters. And when you stand away from the boat, it's funny the way bass works because on the boat, you may not hear that much bass, but if you stand 20 feet away from the boat, all of a sudden it sounds like a car with a ton of bass. So it's just one of those things, man. So on the water, it's gonna sound great, but in the boat, the stereo is nice and loud. It's clean. He's got everything he wants now. So let's go take the weekend off. Hopefully the customer's happy and let's move on to the next project next week. Thanks for watching.